Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're doing Jam A Friday for today's first video. So as always on a Friday, we've got your month ahead look here. We're going to have a look and see what the Japanese and CFS V2 models are saying about the weather for the next four weeks. So it's pretty much a September look ahead. It takes us more or less to the end of uh, September. Um, we'll have a week 10 day video update on the home base afternoon. That will include all of the latest information about um, Hurricane Dorian. So more on that this afternoon. And uh, tonight we've got the final ENSO update for the year. Um, we're clearing the decks with things like ENSO updates for the winter updates that begin on Sunday. So, um, got the uh, final ENSO update for you for 2019 tonight. Uh, but starting us off today is JMA Friday. So, we're going to begin with the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies from the uh, JMA looking at at the uh, Northern Hemisphere view down. Uh, so this is the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just here. The uh, Arctic uh, is around here. And of course, we've got mid latitudes uh, through there. So blue is, is extrapolating to below average heights. And uh, we've got yellow, orange, and red extrapolated to above average heights. That's low pressure and high pressure. Uh, there, so um, this is the week one 500 millibar height anomaly. It's for the 30th of August to the 6th of September. And the coming week, the first week of September, looks quite unsettled. Below average heights are sitting to the north of the UK. Above average heights are pulled back into the middle of the Atlantic and also going over to uh, northeastern parts of Europe. And so that leaves us doing something a little bit like that with the flow and with the jet. It looks like it will be quite unsettled and rather cool as well, actually. The wind is coming in from a northwesterly direction with jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. So quite cool and a little bit unsettled in the week ahead. Then we go through to week two, this is the 6th through to the 13th of September. High pressure uh, becoming more influential here, above average heights extending in from the Atlantic into the UK and then up to Northern Europe, low pressure uh, with jet stream pushed northwards. So that should be a warmer, drier week there. Perhaps not all that warm. Um, I'm not sure we're putting in any particular uh, warm source of air. So probably near normal temperatures, but it should be a lot drier with the high pressure building through the country. And when we go through to weeks uh, three and four, this takes us from the 13th through 27th of September going towards the end of the month. Uh, so we've got below average heights then in the Atlantic to our west. We've got above average heights over Scandinavia to our east. So a little bit of a battle here going on. Uh, we've got uh, the high pressure trying to bring us easterly winds and the low pressure is trying to bring us westerly winds. The squeeze of the two could pull up some quite warm air uh, from the south perhaps. It's one of those charts that if it was in uh, winter then it would be uh, it would be a little bit interesting because it's sort of battleground UK so you could envisage um, weather fronts becoming stuck across the country of course with high pressure over Scandinavia in winter that's quite cold uh, quite a cold signal. This time of year I suspect that's going to bring rain into the west in particular uh, and probably relatively mild or even fairly warmish sort of uh, southerly winds. But bear in mind, it's a two-weekly anomaly as well, so it could be transition. It might be something like week three, still has a high pressure dominating, but we're having week two. And then by week four, maybe we're back to uh, back into low pressure type conditions. Something like that could be going on. You never know with a two-weekly anomaly exactly how it shapes out over two weeks overall. Well, this is a tropical and mid-latitude uh, view, having a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks. So, British Isles in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. Can't see the uh, the sort of North Pole and the Arctic with this. It's off the chart up here. Uh, but, of course, we're just having a look at that view down, so we know what's going on there. So, uh, in the week ahead, from the, uh, from the 30th of August, 6th of September, we have the above average heights in the Atlantic, we have below average heights to the north of Scotland, and it's sort of sending us into a northwest southeast alignment with the jet stream. Temperature anomalies look cooler than average, going to be a pretty chilly start to September, quite an autumnal uh, looking week ahead. 
And precipitation anomalies are actually a little bit above average in northern parts of the country, slightly wet and average there, near normal uh, elsewhere. It's not a particularly wet week, but it certainly is relatively cool. Then we go through to uh, week two, which is the 6th through to the 13th of September. Above average heights then extend through the countries from the Atlantic to our east jet stream, uh, with low pressure up towards Greenland and Iceland up there, pushed off up to the north. So this should be a, a rather warmer week. We do see temperatures lifting up a little bit, although not excessively so. It's certainly not a particularly warm signal, but uh, we're going closer to average, possibly a little bit above uh, there for week two. It's a dry signal as well as that high pressure builds through the country, it kills off the rain uh, bearing weather system, so uh, it should turn dry. Dry a little bit warmer then for the second week of September. And uh, then we get into weeks three and four. We have low pressure then in the Atlantic to our west. We have high pressure to our east and also to our northeast as well. Temperature anomalies for weeks three and four remain very close to average on a particularly big deviation highway, possibly on the little, a little bit on the milder than average side. Does look more unsettled actually uh, with this couple of weeks, so precipitation anomalies are going uh, above average. So it looks like the JMA, although the high pressure is just to the east, low pressure is just to the west, it looks like overall the JMA wants to have the low pressure being the driving. Uh, the driving sort of um, factor uh, within those two weeks there from the 13th to the 27th of September. Let's have a look at CFS V2, see how that compares. So again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into week bids. The first week bid takes from the 30th of August and 5th of September. The coming week, almost perfect agreement really between uh, what the um, JMA is showing, what the CFS is showing. So we have this ridge to the northeast. We have low pressure to the north of Scotland. Have another ridge in the middle of the Atlantic. It's sending the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. So cooler and a little bit unsettled in the week ahead. Then we go through to uh, week two. We get the highlight truck. This one is the 6th to the 12th of September. Above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, below average heights, quite a deep trough into Scandinavia. And it's sailing down through central parts of Europe again. The flow and the jet goes on to that northwest southeast line. In fact, it could actually tilt a little bit northerly there. So that looks like it could be a very cool week from the 6th. 12th of September, probably beginning to settle a little bit as that ridge moves in from the west, but um, certainly uh, on the cool side. Uh, then being a bit of a change for week three, this is the 13th to the 19th of September. We have above average heights then starting to build close to the country, below average heights being pushed up towards Greenland and Iceland, jet stream. Looks like it's starting to move a bit further northwards as well. That could be uh, starting to settle down. Probably not overly warm, but it could be starting to settle down there. And then we go through to week four. This is the 20th to the 26th of September. And high pressure then is actually centred over and to the east of the country, which leaves us bringing in uh, sort of southeasterly tight winds, or maybe even slightly southerly. So into high pressure, definitely much drier there for the final uh, week to 10 days of September, but potentially uh, warming up a little bit as well. That could be turning things quite a bit warmer as the air begins to push up from uh, central and southern parts of Europe. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead from the 30th of August to 5th of September are a little bit cooler than average, just a little bit below average with the temperature anomaly this week. But then it goes actually cooler from the 6th through to the 12th of September. That looks like it's a very cool week as winds probably shift from a northwesterly to, uh, or a west northwesterly to a northwesterly to northerly. So that could be quite, a, quite an autumnal week indeed, it's certainly autumnal feeling from the 6th through to the 12th of September. Uh, high pressure builds in for week three, but temperatures are still quite cool. 13th to 19th of September, if anything, still a little bit below average. So this is quite a coolest September being signalled until we get to week four. This is the 20th to 26th of September, and then we go above average with the temperature anomaly, quite substantially so. So that's a much warmer week there as we go into the final week to 10 days of the month. Precipitation anomalies, finally, the 30th uh, of August 5th of September looks wetter than average in the weekend to the north, near normal down in the south. Uh, week two, close to average, really, with temperature anomalies here from the 6th to the 12th of September, very, uh, very much near normal. 
Week three then starts to go drier than average. It's the 13th, 19th of September. This one is transitioning to something drier. And then those drier than average conditions continue over and also to the east of the country for week four, from the 20th to 26th of September. Looks like that's a big ridge building in there with the CFS for the final sort of week or so of September. But bear in mind, that's a very, very long way off. It's four weeks away. It's probably, or at least partly, uh, happening because of how the model is handling tropical developments down in the tropical Atlantic. So those are stores that wouldn't even have formed yet, never mind working out where they're going to track and uh, what the implications of those will be. So again, that added level of uh, uncertainty that you always get in September. We do have a, quite a clear trend for the first half of the month, though, which is pretty cool. So it looks like the first half of September will be quite cool. A little bit on the unsettled side initially, then maybe going to something a little bit drier for the second week of the month. Beyond that, into the second half of September, I think really uh, for this point of the year, um, it's very, very uncertain where we're going there. The CFS does want to settle things down and warm things up. The JMA not really convinced about that. It's too far away to have any sort of confidence in any outcome, really, for the second half of September. Right, so we'll be back later on uh, with your week's 10 video update. And then tonight we've got the ENSO update coming up, the final one of those for this year. Tomorrow, weekend forecast and week's 10 day video update. But we'll start off bringing you the autumn forecast. And then once the autumn forecast is out of the way, Sunday we begin the first winter update. So it's going to be a busy weekend of updates at Gaza this weekend. Do Please keep checking back to all of them. But uh, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.